level three and just die. Yeah, we also see a Cho'Gath ban from the Mysterious Monkeys, so that one is going to be taken away, won't get a chance to see the Terror of the Void just yet. And Zack, of course, banned, followed by the Kalen, which has honestly made it to the ban list most of the games in 7.14. Yeah. That Kalen ban, um, a lot of teams would have liked to keep her open and first pick her on the side of Misfits Gaming, but they value the Kalista above it. Now, one of the reasons for that is that Mysterious Monkeys have found a lot of success playing Kalista with Yuki down in the bottom lane. If you actually look at their AD care champion pool graphic down the bottom of your screen, you can see how there's five games for Yuki on this Kalista, very often paired with that Thresh from Dreams, and they actually have this lane they can play around in the early game that is not Kikis, and they can really force a lot of aggressive moves. And I think that's why Misfits value the Kalista so highly, so they steal it away from Yuki and give it to Ansama. It is nice to see Han Sama picking up a champion that you can make some plays on, because as you see, 10 Varus games, the guy has been stuck on utility for so long and he does have the ability to really go off and maybe he'll be able to do it. Now the Cinder has been locked in for Power of Evil and that's a player we know is going to go off. So there's two ingredients there in that explosive mix. Oh, we see quite a, a new pick of man face here from them. Oh, they're locking the Maokai. We got the Maokai, all right. So that should be for Max Lore, of course, one yep. of the big tanks for 7.14. Maokai jungle. Uh, I am a little bit sad we don't get a Sijuani. I think that is a better pick in the jungle, but of course, I'm not gonna kill the Maokai hype. It is something we've seen a lot of in North America uh, being used in the jungle. Talk more about that in game, but the point of it is you are a tank with point and click CC. And your ulti is a great zoning tool. Uh, that is the, kind of the too long, didn't read version of why Maokai jungle is a thing. On the other side, Mysterious Monkey, so they're getting that Jace for Kikis. Most likely Kikis could be flexed into mid lane for cost Q as well. And Jace is one of the champions that can benefit from lethality as he can build Duskblade early on in the game. Yeah, it gives him a little damage to complement the tanky front line that they've already got built for themselves. And as we enter ban phase two, the Thresh is removed. So Ignar will not get a chance to combo up for that yo-yo comp with the Kalista. And it's funny because Misfits Gaming are changing up a lot of things here compared to how they normally like to draft. Most of the time they pick for Power of Evil much later on. They don't want to show his pick. They actually want to give him like a great lane matchup. And his Syndra, while well, we've seen it quite a few times, it's not necessarily something they pick this early in the game, but obviously he value the Syndra very highly and he takes it away from Cos Q as well. And it is still a great late matchup almost no matter what uh, happens. We know Cos Q likes his Katarina against it, but that is a losing lane despite Katarina having some kill pressure. Yeah, we've seen Cos Q honestly shine on, I feel like some of the more meta choices. Uh, Cassiopeia last week, he was really able to dish a lot of damage. That game did go to the 45 minute mark, so. Yeah, and oh, now it's actually, there. it's really hard to pick the Cassiopeia now because Cinder is already locked in and that's a tough lane to play for Cosq then. And Katarina actually gets banned away by Misfits Gaming. They are respecting All that. Right. Uh, I wonder if Cosq now wants to actually pick just a boring a champion like Orianna and just say, you know what, I can just try and go even in lane. Or if he has a new pick prepared. Could be the Exile Vladimir. There we go. Ah, she's gonna send it straight away. Had I want to I wanna see him feed less though. That's that's a good point. You don't pick Vladimir to die on the enemy tower at level six. Yeah. So that uh, should be a change for him. But uh, yeah, classic. We get to see that Vladimir from okay. uh, Koski. Yeah, and there's you know there's some CC that they can bring out between the Brom and the Gragas as well. I mean, we could see some pretty explosive fights. Yeah, it's Let's a see big, what this uh, answer with. Big explosive team fight set up for Mysterious Monkeys. Ooh, uh, this was doing the same though. They bring right. the Jarvan. All right. So uh, both teams are just packing like a ton of CC. All uh, right, now you got the Braum Gragas combo on one side. You got even more on the side of Misfits. We talked about the Maokai, point and click CC with his W. Jarvan, of course, is great follow up, and the same with Syndra. So, Misfits Gaming right now, looking for support. Tom Kinch is available, which is a fine pick against the Braum. They do want to get a bit more engaged, though. I mean, why not? If you already have so much engaged, just get some more. Yeah, throw it on there. So, the Rakan's going to get paired up with that Kalista. Should be able to toss him in a little farther just to set up the quickness at that level six point. Now, Mysterious Monkeys, what are they gonna round this out with? What do they need for AD carry for Yuki? So we know Yuki likes his Twitch when they're already running teamfight comps, but that will be a lot of scaling on Mysterious Monkey's side. Uh, will be instead a bit a little bit stronger laning phase from the Tristana. Mm -hmm. Not the greatest laning phase in the world, but definitely better than what Twitch can offer. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised. This is the first time we've seen Yuki on this Tristana, this split, so 
he kind of does seem like a champion that would be right up his alley anyways, but I guess he hasn't really been challenged on the champion pool front. And it's nice to see both teams changing up the pick band strategy a little bit. Yeah, so exactly, like we see changes in the pick and band strategy, but not exactly like new things that are purely impacted by 714. Uh, the Maokai was already showing up at 713 in North America, so that's not really just due to the new patch. And also the Jay's top lane, it's a pick we've always seen here and there. Uh, I think this one, obviously, he's gone a little bit up in value due to uh, the Duskblade being introduced, but he doesn't always have to build that as a first item. He can come later in his build uh, still. So while it is a new patch, I don't feel like this pick and man phase was that impacted by the changes here on 714. Mm -hmm. Means both teams have a little bit more familiarity with what they're going to be doing, and of course, Worth always remembering the Mysterious Monkeys, formerly the Misfits Academy lineup. Of course, three-fifths of the team, as Kickus and Amazing were both part of the Fnatic Academy lineup. And a coach. And a coach as well, Unlimited, yeah. You gotta think he might know just a little bit more than some of those other teams. I mean, you might know some trends of how uh, Misfits like to uh, set up the draft and so on, but obviously a lot will change over the, the few months where Misfits uh, Academy was sold, bought by Mysterious Monkeys. And they're going to this game here, Pyra, as the underdog, but I don't want to say that there's like no chance they can win at all because I actually think Mysterious Monkeys have been looking better and better lately. And Misfits have had a bit of a downturn, so will the Monkeys be able to overcome the Misfits? We're about to find out. Let's load up onto Summoner's Rift. Let's see, Power Evil on his Syndra, always a man to look at on the side of Misfits Gaming, but Early on, we got to also look at the junglers. Uh, so often, we talk about the early impact they can have. On patch 714, in this tank meta, it is rare we see a tank jungler dominate the early game. Just, you know, get five successful ganks, snowball the entire early game. It doesn't really happen. Uh, some of the early games are much slower uh, for that reason. It also means that if you do fall behind in your lane, you can't just cry to the jungler. Like, oh, come on, please help me, save me. That's what you have Elise in and Rexan Elise for. The tanks, they want to keep farming. So wait, what you're telling me is if I want to get my team to stop QQing and solo queue, all I need to do is pick a tank jungler? Yes, and you tell them, guys, and he needs to scale. Okay. Scaling, that's the strategy. What if every lane loses? Uh, they will blame you, obviously, no matter what. Okay. So I'm not sure it's going to work in solo queue, but at least then you have an excuse for yourself. But obviously, you should have ganked every lane before I mean, three minutes. That's the most important thing, though, having an excuse to feel good about yourself, right? Yeah, that's the key part. So, oh, good to know. Malka Jungle here. Uh, what he offers also in the early game is great clear speed. His saplings, when they're in these brushes here, when they explode once, they obviously get to tag on to the minions once again and explode a second time. So the AoE damage on Raptors, fantastic for Maokai. He stays pretty healthy in the jungle as well. And his gank. Obviously, looking at just that point and click twisted advance is good CC, but the damage is not really there to back it up on champions. So he needs damage in the lanes. And that's why you have a Syndra. That's why you have a Javan. So there are good lanes for Max Lord again. Yeah, it's going to get sped up a little bit too because he does have that super leash going through. Han Sama is going to be able to pull out those Ren stacks to help get this red buff even earlier. As Maxlor finishes the job, level yep. two before two minutes in. And you see uh, Mysterious Monkeys already put a ward on that uh, blue buff right there. Top lane. Quick graphics showing Kikis as champions. We were just kind of teasing it a little bit, but he's played a lot of wacky stuff. Uh, I think Jace is probably one of the most meta things he's played yeah, so far. I mean, very, very uh, normal compared to the rest of his picks. The likes of Akali, obviously the Camille is something that's not unheard of, but then we saw the Renekton and we're like, wait a minute, that's a meta pick. That doesn't happen for Kikis too much. And funny enough, that was actually one of the, the best games we saw from Kikis where he was able to really uh, have a strong impact. So Max Law, mid lane gang, Chris Ooh, and Flash right on top of the Vlad and Scout of the Week will miss. Thanks to the Flash from Kaz Q. All right, Max Law want to trade Flash for Flash. We see the Maokai in action. Also steals a bit of experience. Smart move. So what was that about uh, not needing to gank early on? No, I'm saying that Maokai with Twisted Advance is good at ganking. He didn't, he didn't need to gank. Okay, fair enough. He didn't need. He could have just farmed like, you know, this Gragas is doing on the other side. Uh, but that's the thing. If you want to gank as a tank, do it. You have CC. If yes, you want to farm as a tank, do it. You have great scaling. Oh, there's options. There's so many options. Okay. And you, have, you can have the mechanics of a potato, and you can actually still be useful. You speaking from experience? Yes, Maokai is great if you don't feel very <laughs> confident in your skill shots. It's okay. really hard to miss any of his abilities. His ulti fills up the entire lane right now, Pyra. You really can't miss it. Unless they walk out of it, but that's not your fault then. <laughs> of course. All right, well, I mean, we've gotten a master class on how the Maokai is going to work out. But I really want to talk on the other side of the map, because Amazing has 
honestly been Ooh. playing a lot of this Gragas. The Rek'Sai has been banned out. Let's see what he's able to get done up top so far he's backing away. Yeah, Amazing has also spent a lot of time top lane. We saw some of those picks from Kickers right there. They do need jungle attention in the early game. If you pick Akali and so on, it's very easy for the enemy jungler to kill you and shut you down and you can't really afford to fall behind on these champions. So Amazing being near topside early on happens every game. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the Misfits game plan right now as Cos-Q gets knocked back for just a second. They want to have a strong early game. We haven't seen, honestly, as strong of an early game as we could have expected from this team because it just seems like they don't get as much of a gold lead as they honestly should when they're playing up against teams and they still look like they're trading objectives early. And I feel like they've had a little bit of the Unicorns of Love issue where the mid laner is the guy you can't really rely on in the early game to not start falling behind. Obviously, on the Vladimir in the early levels, it's expected that you do fall down a little bit, but once you hit level six, you can start playing very aggressive in that lane, and that's what we might see from Cosq. He needs to step up, though. He needs to perform better if Mysterious Monkeys want to really start taking down some of these top six teams in Europe. Mm -hmm. Misfits definitely following through on this Vlad. Of course, his Flash still going to be down for several minutes, and Power of Evil Just will have a chance die. at level six don't to make die. it happen. I mean, he's got the level advantage already, but yeah, that's sometimes a tough ask when you want to go in and make the outplay. Yeah, but again, the fact he can just farm to level 6 is fine. Oh, nice, and drops. Ooh, interrupt on Yuki's horse burn both summoners, and it's not going to be enough as Ignar takes a gleaming quill. Yeah, you First can't cut. instantly start jumping out because then the knockup will actually happen right after from Rakan and interrupt the Tristana jump. If we get the replay, we can actually see that in slow motion as well. Let's see... Uh, Bot lane amazing is potentially looking to maybe interrupt some recalls, but uh, he just steps away. And uh, early kill right now for Ignar and Hansama, that's very important. Yeah. Yuki did not want to back or have to oh, go back good. to base that's right about risky. then as Ignar goes pretty deep. You see that pickaxe being picked up by the Tristana. Would have liked the BF sword instead. So let's see the engage right now. The problem is here, if Yuki charges up his jump instantly, then the jump will actually get interrupted by Ignar here. Most of the time, you actually want to take the knockup first and then queue up the jump right after. So then, once you've already, you know, been CC'd, you're actually not flying in the air and then it gets stopped, like we saw right here. Mm -hmm. uh, Yuki, though, ends up dying and it's a great engage from Ignar. Our Max Law, meanwhile, will get to use the saplings from the brushes to get a bit of extra damage on these raptors. And again, as I said earlier, you can steal a lot of raptors very quickly on Maokai. Yes, you can. Now. For the Misfits, it's a pretty good start for them. But the Monkeys, you know, these are guys that, even though they have been on an upward trend, they do need all the points they can get. They're sitting at the bottom of Group B at the moment, and it's, it's closer than you might think, especially considering how things all started up. Let's see what happens around mid lane, because you have... Oh, Flash, there. power unleashed, and Koskyu trying to run away. He's got the Ghost on, narrowly avoids death. So Max Dodge is left. He was sitting, actually, waiting, and Ignar was on the way as well, but they didn't want to commit a tower dive. Maxwell is spotted by a ward and Amazing is around, but uh, I'm just looking uh, at this uh, Sintra because that's not a normal first buy. Oh, yeah. Rossfang, okay. Interesting. Power Weaver, what are you doing uh, now? He wants more gold. I'm going to go ahead and get I that. Mean, he <laughs> probably wants to fully upgrade it and get this slow. All right, well, you're looking himself. that up. I'm going to watch Maxwell and Amazing batter at each other right here. Kikas is actually backing away, and he's on less than half his health bar. Does not want to have to cancel that one, and Maxlord doesn't stop him from doing it. But the pressure's topside for Misfits. Yeah. It is right now. I'm still just looking at it. Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, it's okay, Deficio. I can no, take no, over it's just solo like, cast okay, for a minute. Okay, so, so what is it he's trying to achieve here? Obviously, it does add some nice mana region for him in the laning phase, and once he fully upgrades it, he will get that slow that he can use to try and set up maybe another stun for himself. But I think there's just so much CC and engage already from Misfits that that shouldn't be needed for Power of Evil to, uh, to set up his place. And what is he giving up for that, right? Like, it's not going to be the most damage efficient item by a yeah, long shot. Exactly. And you need your Syndra to be able to dominate. They've traditionally and consistently, Misfits have put a lot of pressure on Power of Evil to be the primary carry in this team, in this iteration of Misfits, because not a lot of other people have been stepping up. Now, exactly. that being said, Han Sam is doing pretty darn good right now. So, bot lane is winning very easily for Misfits right now. Mid lane, you see Power of Evil at least going even in CS and having some pressure, but Koskyu has survived. He lost his flash early. He's, again, getting fine farm. He's at this point where he can start trading with Power of Evil and be more aggressive. 
Top lane as well. Actually, just talking about after. Oh, twisted advance in goes the Rakan, and there's Look. the Maokai ultimate he rocking and rolling all over him. No, they cannot. And they can't miss amazing as Han Sama pulls out the Ren Stacks for his first kill. So if you haven't watched League of Legends in a while and you wonder what on earth was that from the Maokai, well, no longer Ventral Mail. Yeah, we definitely reworked him. Uh, the ulti right now is instead of that massive damage reduction circle he used to have, it is instead this massive AoE zoning tool that if you get hit by it, you get rooted in place. So the way you want to use Use it is around objectives or towers you know like a dragon you can use it to cover the entire river and either force the enemy team to step away from that drake or get caught by the root and engaged on same thing on tower you can use that to then force them off the tower and you can get a lot of free damage on that big uh, easy structure right there so that's basically the way you want to use that just to summarize the whole thing like use it as a zoning tool from maokai's ulti a far top lane getting lane stopped on he has decided to go with uh, Dracus's advice and get that early Bramble Vest for yep. himself. Obviously now it is a mini Thorn Mail you get that reduces uh, the healing you he's, receive on the other side. He's up against a semi-range champion like Kikis, and obviously even with the AD carry Yuki coming up there too, he wants to be able to push some damage back when he's getting you know, relentlessly pounded on because he just can't quite close that distance unless he wants to all in. Now Ignar just going forward for amazing, but he's, he's got to be he's careful. There is there. Oh, Blast Cone taken. So. And he's able to... Dash his way up. Yeah, that was uh, a risky play from Ignar, sneaking in without any backup nearby. But obviously, Rakan with great mobility to try and get out. Also knew he had the Blast Cone. So back to Alfari right there, just stacking armor. 35 armor on that Bramble Vest. Deals a bit of damage with it when he takes damage and, of course, applies to Grievous Wounds, which is the key part for him. All about the armor right there, Power of Evil. Equal levels on Koski. Maxlor also equal with Amazing, but Amazing is here. Throws the barrel, what? but a little too far right now. That one sucked. Hema Plague comes in, and it's just on minions, so Mysterious Monkeys blow a couple of ults for nothing. And then that's the thing, you know, if you already missed the Flash Body Slam, you might as well miss your ulti as well. You know, is just that like, how it works? Just have fun with it. Step out. No one saw that one except for the entire crowd in Berlin and everyone watching at home. We totally won't replay that one either. Hint, hint, observers. All right. Well, while we wait for uh, that definitely not replay, we'll check in with what's going on back up top as Ignar wants to make it two on his own kill count. Remember, he's the one who secured that first blood just narrowly, but him and Hansama have been taking it to Yuki and Dreams up here in the top, keeping him under tower. That's why we like Misfits just matching the swap. It was, it was Mysterious Monkeys who went top first because they were losing the bot lane, and Misfits just said, you know what? We are not done with this 2v2 lane. Go top lane, keep having that winning lane to play around. Alfari. Might be under some pressure in the bottom lane. Koskyu on the way. Amazing already here. Uh-oh. All right, well, he's got no ult to work, but he's not going to need it. Oh, and in goes the cage, and he's going to dash his way out of it. Flag and drag. Amazing tanking tower shots. Koskyu will tag his way in, and so far, Alfari has gotten the better of these three monkeys. Let's see if he's able to get oh, the he dragon strike. The minions! He's going to dash away. Alfari is finally going to fall, but that was a big investment from the mysterious Yeah, monkeys. he tried right there. Nice dodge on the body slam with the Java and ulti. Meanwhile, top lane tower will die. First tower goals for Misfits because Alfari bought so much time in the bottom lane. And, of course, Deidre and Sam and Ignar winning this 2v2 lane. But this is the cleaner early game for Misfits, right? Alfari by so much time, draws so much attention. The top side dual lane continues to push. And this is now a decent gold lead for these guys. Two and a half thousand at 11 and a half minutes. Let's see, uh, the replay again. Look at how he dodges the body slam here with his own ulti on Jarvan. He sees the body slam. Ulti's at the same time. Actually, he got hit by it, but, uh, so you know, it looked great. <laughs> so let's just say that was uh, what he did. We'll try at least to dodge as much of it as possible. Went back in. I don't know if he had anything left to try and kill Gragas. Most likely not. Maxo, yeah. though, meanwhile, he actually did manage to secure the Rift Held once again because of Far Report so much time. Yeah. Amazing nearly did go down to the courtesy of the minions, had to health smite on the Krug camp, and here we are, Misfits yep. looking like a pretty solid early game from this team. Right, let's go back to Power of Evil, and he's built real quickly. Yep, Frost Queens in. is completed right now. So what he's sacrificing again is just, it's it's a fairly large chunk of AP, like Morel Normicon compared to Frost Queens, 40 AP difference uh, that he's obviously not getting right now, but he's valuing very clearly having that active, the two ghosts appearing out and slowing down a target. That must be basically the reason he's doing this. Or maybe he feels like the extra gold actually adds value for him that he gets with this item. But I have to say it needs to be about the slow. Uh, it is a big investment, though. Yeah. 
because they're banking on the long game, that's for sure. And Kikis with the hammer knocking Alfari back, but Maxlor is already incoming, waiting for that point. And Clicky flashes to finish it up, followed through, and it's Nature's grasp as Kikis tries to flag and drag his way under tower. Amazing, gonna knock the barrel. Alfari going in, oh, but he's he alive. can't finish the job on a Kikis. And now it is Maxlor who's caught out all alone. The rest of the team, a double kill for Kikis. Oh, let's see what happens around the mid lane, because Koski is going aggressive. Flashing forward, and that's a big bite out of the health bar. That Hemoplague did not look good for Power of Evil, but he's able to stay alive through it all. So remember, Pyro, when I said this uh, Maokai is not really going to offer any damage. You need the damage from your laner. Well, they were relying on the full tank Javan to actually deal enough damage to kill Kikis in time. Well, the full damage Javan, or full tank Javan, doesn't have a lot of damage. So you see the engage right here. Maxlow will flash in. Kikis with the early flash just to get on the tower and pull Maxlow with him under the tower. And now, there really isn't any damage from full armor Javan and a Maokai jungle. Meaning Kikis on a Jace actually stays alive. And of course the counter gank means that Mysterious Monkeys pick up a lot, of, uh, a lot of kills here. I think Misfits should not play around a full tank Javan at all. They have already sacked that lane from the get-go. You have a winning 2v2 duel lane. They should be playing in the lane where there's a tower to kill. They're going top lane again right now, despite the fact there's a Drake alive and there's a bot lane tower they can go for, and that's the winning lane. So Hansama and Ignor are currently playing for nothing. There's no objective on the top side for them to take. Yeah, this is, we praised it earlier that Misfits were able to get some things done and were trading effectively, but now it's kind of gone all topsy-turvy. They just haven't been able to focus on the right objectives, and you can see this is possibly one of the reasons why they don't seem to have these strong gold leads in all these games. Around 15 minutes, it doesn't look very good even if they, they're up in kills. They have a lot of jungle proximity, which means Max Lore's around, but it just doesn't always pan out. That's very, very true. And one of the big things about, you know, the missing gold lead here for Misfits is the fact they give away a lot of towers as well to the opponent team, actually the most in the league. This game here, they haven't lost a tower yet. And also they did push this top lane wave, so they might just try and go mid lane and take this mid lane tower. All right, they got the Rift Herald here and they forced three of the monkeys back from the mid. Power of Evil shepherding the minions through and that's gonna finish the job. Tower number two for the Misfits as they look to establish even more control in this jungle of mysterious monkeys. A lot of wards already there. And that Rift Herald's doing double time. Yeah, getting a bit of extra damage right here. Obviously would have been able to take down that mid tower with just the Herald, but they got some backup from the dual lane. Misfits have uh, sent the dual lane top again here, looking at that tier two tower, but they're very deep inside the enemy territory. Amazing is around Power Vivo as well. No flash on the Oh, double time as he got the stun back and the Unleashed Power is enough to take a bite out of his health bar, but not enough to finish the job. And in goes Rakan Ignar, saving the life of his mid laner. But will it be enough as Dreams pops the Glacial Fissure? No damage follow up, and Han Sama will claim a kill. In the end, Yuki got that one kill, but going for him. Looking for more. Yuki has already hopped away. He's going to have to flash that wall. He's got Ren stacks in him, and they pull him out. It's going to be Han Sama with the double on that. And now Koskyu's running for his life away from Alfari and Max. Max Law still chasing him for now. Oh, he did he get the heal? He does have it after the fact. However, he's still burning down. The pool is closed, and Max Law comes up with the kill. So a lot of things just happened right there. We saw a fight start around the mid lane where Amazing missed his ulti again on the Gragas. He actually allowing Power of Evil to move towards his team. That one missed ulti could actually end up costing a lot here for the Mysterious Monkeys because it meant Power of Evil stayed alive for a long time. Rakan joined in. Rest of Misfits actually managed to get in the fight before Power of Evil died. And uh, Mysterious Monkeys did not get a whole lot from that fight. No, they didn't. Prior to it, it was looking better for them because Kikus had managed to basically get the outplay with the assistance of the tower, but here's where things start to turn around. Power yeah. of Evil. There's no flash on Power of Evil. If that whole ulti hits from Amazing, Power of Evil is stuck in the middle of his lane, and he's just going to die. The fact it misses means Power of Evil now gets assistance from Ignar. It actually now means Dreams ends up dying as well before Yuki gets a kill on Power of Evil. So that was a lot invested by Mysterious Monkeys based on a missed ulti from the Gragas. Obviously, Yuki will end up dying after trying to go for that one kill on Power of Evil. Misfits right there. Nice play with the Rift Hell for mid tower. They were not supposed to get multiple kills after as well. That was a big mistake from the Mysterious Monkeys. Started to open up that gold lead now. 4,000 ahead. They got themselves the movement speed of the Air Dragon. 
So they'll be able to get to those objectives a little bit faster, and now they turn their attention towards the bottom side. You can see the vision already in place, and they're looking to finish off that final bottom tier one. Yeah, I like this move here. Hansama, Ignar, sitting them on the bottom side. They are the golden boys right now on Misfits. You want to play around these guys as much as possible. They're going to fight. Goes in, and there's the quickness. He's got three right now. It's amazing getting popped down here. Power of Evil focusing on him, but it's Hansama who picks up the kill. The rest of the monkeys trying to respond. Nature's grasp is on, but Hansama is sticking with it till he's shut down by Cause Q, trying to disrupt this fight. The tower still stands through it all. Three are stunned, and Misfits maybe bit <laughs> off a little more than they could chew. This game is bonkers, man. People just die left and right, and whenever one team has the advantage, it just turns around in favor of the other what one. What do we expect, Officio? I mean, this is it, it's not the cleanest two teams. Misfits, we've been criticizing how the early game sometimes goes a little awry. Mysterious Monkeys have a game plan, which is funnel the kills on a Kikis, but... Been working so I far. Mean, it, it is, but you gotta still manage to keep everyone else alive. So... The engage in itself for one kill is actually fine for Misfits. The problem is Koski is probably closer with the Ghost than they think. So he gets to join the fight much earlier here. And then suddenly, Misfits are no longer sitting with that 4v3 advantage. It's actually 4v4. And it's a pretty strong Vladimir joining in. Koski is not behind in this game here. He's actually been able to farm, even get a small advantage over Power of Evil. He's picked up two kills now on this Vladimir. Like, he's going to be a monster in team fights, And he's against a Frost Queen's Syndra who sacrificed damage for utility. This is looking very good for Koski. Yeah, that's true. And, and for Misfits, the tables turn a little bit, right? We talk about Hansama having been that utility player for a long time, but now that they decide he's going to be the main carry, four kills on this Kalist is not hurting him any. Yeah. They have power of evil on the utility. And they send him top lane again now. This bot lane tower will die very soon. It is low. Uh, so I want to see what they're trying to do here, because Baron, while the, you have a Kalista, it's a little bit early uh, to start rushing down a Baron. Ah, stays alive. The minions didn't actually get it. Wow. Uh, I, I guess at this point, you can literally just dive in and actually take it down. But that is a free turret waiting I mean, hey, to be killed. The last time that Alfari thought that, he died to kick us, but hey. True. So what Misfits can do is because they have Hansama and Ignar winning their lane every single time. Whenever they push it to Tier 2 Tower, they can walk into the enemy jungle, get vision, kill the enemy wards, and look for picks. They have so much CC with their comp. There's the Fates call. Throw in Ignar, and he's getting down with the quickness. Now they go Twisted Advance, rooting down onto Amazing. His Dreams is caught out by Power of Evil. And just like that, Misfits coming up with one. Uh, right there, we saw one of those moves. You know, it's all about pushing the top lane first and then hide. Move inside that jungle here. And Sama and Ignar, they were sitting in that tribe brush. Power of Evil might try and look for another one. Still so early in the game that just rushing the Baron is very risky. Yeah, but, but in a few minutes, Misfits might be able to do it. I like the way that they're pulling these picks off because not only are they not afraid to fight after the fact, but they can make moves so fast, get in, get out. I mean, they're playing the Mysterious Monkeys, but they're the ones with Guerrilla Warfare. And right there, the crowd, obviously very happy with the macro, the fact that Misfits care about vision. Definitely agree with the crowd as well. And they might actually look to start it. They're starting it right now. Okay. Still very risky what they're doing at the moment. Full vision, and they see where Amazing is right now. They need to be able to push him back if they don't want this to turn into a 50-50. But they do have the Callista. They don't have the nerve. That was a little bit too early uh, from them. Everyone had already respawned on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. And they were all basically just around the Baron to go in and stop it. We need that bot lane tower to die because Misfits uh, can get some gold from that. And then they can push the lanes really deep, all the way into Tier 2 Towers of Mysterious Monkeys, set up your vision first, and then go for that Baron play with the Callista. For the time being, it's all about trying to control that mid and keep the waves pushed down that one, so Misfits can establish that control over the Baron pit yet again. We also got the Talisman completed on Ignar. I really like that item here on 714. Especially on Rakan. Uh, especially on Rakan, but I love the fact it gives that 8% movement speed when people run towards you, so when you dive and engage, your team gets buffed when they run towards you, which means towards the enemy team. Good movement speed here. Now the Baron being started, Mysterious Monkeys are still around. Still very early, and there goes the Frost Queen's claim ghost, but Amazing is in the back of the pit. Power of Evil had looked to go forward, and in comes Ignar now. They're going to flag and drag Alfari on his way in. The Cataclysm comes down. Hansa oh, on the backside. Koskiu, though, he's melting through Power of Evil, but Power is staying alive through it all until Koskiu finally pulls the shutdown, but he's found himself out of teammates, and the rest of Misfits are chasing on. They may have lost their mid-carry, but they have taken four away from the Mysterious Monkeys, and guess what? It's Baron time. And all they're doing, Pyra, is stop the Baron and say, hey, Mysterious Monkeys, you want to go stop this Baron? Yes? Okay. Now we can hard engage. So Misfits are using the Rakan with Talisman to just force fights around this big objective, and they're now succeeding with it. Yes, they lose a mid tower. Who cares? You pick up a Baron. Eventually. Eventually, you will get it. Yeah, friend stacks are there pretty good. There you go. 
Right, so they got it on four now. Power hasn't come back up, but here's how it all began in the fight. Yeah, they're all leaning on getting this fight and winning the fight here. Engage is nice from Ignar. Yuki is actually now split up from his team, so as an AD carry, it's really hard to do a whole lot because you can't really get to auto attack against mages like Syndra. She can one-shot you as we just saw here. And that suddenly means now that Yuki couldn't really do anything in the fight. And also, while well, you got that one kill, well, you just lost your entire team. Yeah. So the call for Misfits in itself might be a little bit unusual in starting a Baron that early against five members who are alive. But the entire call was, we want to fight them, use this to bait them into a fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, kick is he's nuts. Uh, no, he's crazy. He's, go for it he's hiding behind him. They got Max Loren Hans. He's not that crazy. All right, finally they get the tower. Yay, minions. Yay. All right. Now that that's over and done with, laundry list, one more ticked off. Misfits have pretty good control over this map. They're going to be able to clear away as much of the vision as they'd like. And oh, Alfari looks to go gaming. on to Yuki. We'll talk about that tweet in a minute to Fischio because there's some action. Never mind, he gets knocked back. And he goes in again. Hello, flash away. Uh, we've seen actually a lot of uh, banter and uh, fun trash talk between mm -hmm. teams and players uh, yesterday and today. Uh, Mithy was going to do some weird thing uh, against H2K. Well, we saw Power of Evil, and he was kind of lying, though. I don't see a Nasher's Tooth. That is true, but he did say weird builds, yeah, uh, which is true. what we're Ooh. seeing. And, Mis and Misfits Gaming did say that uh, Mysterious Monkeys, or Amazing, would eat his own words. All right, Ignar, biding his time. This time, he goes in a little bit at the wrong time, because Koskyu had gone into his pool, but it's enough to push them back to finish off an inner tower. 24 and a half minutes, that Goldie keeps on rolling forward. It's about 7,000 in the favor of Misfits. And they're eyeballing that base here. Alfari with the Baron empowered minions up on the top side, uncontested until Amazing makes his appearance along with Yuki. Yeah, great use of the Baron so far from Misfits here. Great setup for the Baron as well. I actually think uh, them forcing that fight, while it looked a little bit uh, risky at first, ended up being very successful because they knew they had the strong team fighting comp. Uh, Righteous Glory on Maokai as well. Like, they have so many movement speed buffs for their team their Talisman, the Righteous Glory. Yep. It is so easy for Misfits to force a fight. And also, it's easy for them to stay alive in a number of ways. Not only that, big old front line that you see keeping dreams locked up, they've also got some little cats, too. Some weird, long <laughs> cats. Some of the skins in our game is very, very strange to fish you up. I know, I know. We, yeah, we've been doing some weird things back in uh, cool my thing. day. Cool. Back in my day, Pyro. Yeah, know, they were recolors, right? Yeah, season one. Yeah, you just changed the color of the champion. That was skin. Hey, oh, we're going all four kickers right now, recognizing that is the superior threat. But Alfari finds himself a little bit too far as Koski going for the flank. Hansama trying to hop away. Hemoplague is on him, and Ignar is the one who's going down. But it doesn't matter unless Yuki can get a miracle fight. I don't think so. Taken down, but he does take power of evil with him. Hansama has been absolutely massive this game, and now it is inhibitor time for Misfits. Misfits game, when they first picked this Kalista here, they banned the Kalista and said, we want the Kalista for Ansama, take it away from Yuki as well. And it's been a massive success for Misfits Gaming. They won the 2v2 lane, they got that kill as well against Yuki. They've been taking towers left and right. The Kalista was key in getting the early Baron. Like, this first pick Kalista have been so valuable for this team. And we're seeing why again they valued that pick so highly. Yeah, here was the fight again where they all went for Kickus, and it's a miracle they didn't actually take him down right away. Well, he did stay alive for a few seconds at least, and he was kind of out of the fight right after. Koskyu on this Vladimir that has been doing well, is trying to do his best in these fights. I, I feel bad for him because there's been so many games where he's been struggling and the team has been trying to kind of, you know, carry him. This game, he's actually the man trying to carry his teammates, uh, but he's not getting any help. Uh, his front line is non-existent at this point because, you know, Amazing and Dreams are really far behind in this game. And Yuki as a Tristana just can't get in range to hit anything due to the damage and CC and Misfits. Well, only at level 13 too, right? You need more time. The Mysterious Monkeys need to stop this bleeding, but it's difficult to do when there's such a snowball in effect. Misfits, they can honestly just push around wherever they want to throw their weight. There's only two towers inside the base outside of the Nexus. There's an open inhib down bottom. And yeah, you've got an explosive team fight and a lot of CC, but we've seen Mysterious Monkey is just unable to really fight on the same level that Misfits have it. Yeah, that is very true. I'm looking at Power of Evil and his uh, Frost Queens again. I don't see how much gold he's earned uh, in this game from it. It is 973. All right, is that worth the fish? Yet? Uh, I mean, <laughs> most millions are probably going to say no, but uh, he got at least 1,000 gold back from it. Ignore, on the other hand, 1,400 gold with his Talisman. Yeah, he's a lot of extra gold for him. That for sure. Got the Knight's Vow and uh, Kikis. He's 
Well, he hasn't died this game, but that might change as he goes to the skies, but in comes Ignar as well. It is not going to be a 1v1 for Kikis. Hansama, power of evil, everybody's there, and Alfari gets the kill. Can't be pushing when the Misfits are coming for you. Looks like they're going to be going for this inhibitor right now. Pretty easy for them to take in a 5v4 situation. Amazing. Make a token effort to shove them back, but he's just offering them a nice refreshing drink. So thank you very much. We'll take your inhib too. So another kill for Misfits. Get that inhib. Uh, Power of Evil as well. Looking back at him again with the Storm Raiders. So he's just going full on movement speed focus, which is, I guess if you think about it, like he couldn't run Ghost in this game. Because he run the Ignat here against Vladimir for the laning phase, so he's getting all his mobility from Frost Queens and Storm Raiders yeah. uh, to make up for it. Well, the crowd likes that mobility. Sure, I mean... That's great, it's great. That, I mean, I form. guess, it, again, it, it, it makes sense, uh, despite this being something I don't see very often. All right. I've also hit the point where I get Storm Raiders on absolutely <laughs> everything I can over Thunderlords, just because it feels so great and so valuable with that burst of movement speed. It feels like they're just letting him be like incredibly hard to catch bait. Because it's not Power of Evil that is really dishing this damage, especially on that build. Right. Ignar is setting up these fights brilliantly. Alfari's putting people in the cage. Maxlor is doing that weird cat thing. And, all, <laughs> and also, you, you are in a meta where there's a lot of engage and a lot of tanks who can get onto you, and you are a champion with no dashes. Like, no movement speed buffs on Syndra. So if you don't have any sort of movement speed to help you, it can get really hard to navigate in fights. That's where Storm Raiders is going to help him quite a lot. Uh, now, in this case, we can't really use uh, Ghost because of the lane matchup we had. It's just able to stay safe other ways. And Koz-Q, once again, still trying to carry. Obviously, Kikis is going to get heftier and heftier with the damage as time goes on. You can see after the Blade of the Rune King, he had the Black yeah. Paper. He has a Last Whisper now, but he needs more time. The whole team needs more time. You pick Jace to win the lane and then become this snowballing split pusher. Uh, when your team is losing around you, it's really hard to kind of use Jace effectively. Now he needs to try and one-shot someone in the back line. Mm -hmm. uh, Power of Evil will get that 50% movement speed buff as well uh, in fights. Monkeys are here. See what they do. In comes Rakan, and he gets a double charm. Alfari instantly turning his attention. You can see the Misfits collapse is huge, but do they have the damage? Hansana waiting around, and it's Kazku tried to go on to him, but he has to go golden, isolated from the team, and Alfari should be able to get a finisher off. It looks like it's going to be Power of Evil that does it with a power unleashed. He gets a second. Ignar popping up on Amazing, and now Hansama. No, it's going to be Power that gets that triple. There's no way for Mysterious Mongoose to ever disengage a fight against all this engage, all this movement speed on the side of Misfits and they're going straight for that Nexus. Yeah, Yuki, I don't think you can hold on to this one right now, but maybe you can hold on to his life into the fountain he goes, and they Yo, still wanted a piece of it. And he's still able to protect it, but he cannot protect his Nexus. So at 31 minutes into the game, Misfits say, yes, we can. Turn it around, finishing off Yuki for the ace, and it's going to be Nexus. One game in the books for Misfits Gaming. And I have to say, Pyra, the longer we watch this game, the more I like the Misfits draft with Again, the amount of tools to start fights, proactivity has been an issue for a lot of European teams. They've been playing too slow, too passive. Misfits, they make sure that's impossible with this draft right here. And also punish, you know, if the other team is playing defensive, because again, they have so many ways to start the fights. Very well thought out draft. And also again, with the power of evil, getting movement speed from He's Frost Queens when he's fully yeah. stacked up and when he's getting the Storm Raiders. Like, so even the guy without mobility actually managed to get it through his build and his uh, keystone. Very true. And, you know, I talked a lot about his, him being like the utility player. That Obviously, it's not going to be completely true. Cinder's still going to do a lot of damage. I was checking the after game stats. Yeah, he did a lot more damage, actually, than Yuki did in that game. But Yuki was definitely not looking too shabby. Or, excuse me, um, Hansama. Hansama. No, I may, again, uh, the fact they wanted 2v2 lane that hard obviously was great for Misfits in the start, and I think just uh, a great game from them, and again, love the, love the draft. Absolutely. So Misfits Gaming, flex their muscles in game number one. Let's hear from our analysts for more on that win. Sounds like you like the draft official. <laughs> and uh, well, we will talk a bit more about that because when we were looking at Misfits Gaming before the game, we said, hey, there's nothing wrong with their early game. They know how to build leads, but they don't necessarily know how to force a fight at the right time or control the objectives in the mid game, which has led to their demise a couple of times. So what tools did they give themselves in the draft to avoid that? 
I think the biggest thing that stands out in the draft here is the Rakan. They had the opportunity to pick a Thresh together with a Callista to pick something like an Alistar, but Rakan is someone that with the Flash can engage from so far away and can also easily build into the Talisman for the extra movement speed as well. I was sitting here saying, I think Sivir would have gone really well with their comp, but they just end up getting the Righteous Glory and the Talisman <laughs> instead, so they pretty much got their own, build your own Sivir ulti there. Who needs a Sivir comp with a Maokai when you can just get movement speed from everywhere, including your mid laner, like everything. Well, yeah, I was <laughs> right. thinking, we, we, we glossed over that, but you were talking during yeah. the game how you thought, well, it's actually a great tool because you have more slows, you have more ability even to lock someone down in the game. So I agree, and I'm not going to advocate for everybody building Frost Queens, <laughs> but specifically for Misfits and fixing the problem of actually getting those engages, it works because not only do you get the movement speed on Syndra, you basically guarantee the stun almost every time because you just hit the active, it slows them, you get the stun, everybody runs at them with the extra movement speed. So I think for Misfits, it was a smart draft for how to fix their problems that we've been complaining about for a couple of weeks now. Means to an end, yeah. indeed. Uh, and then we look at the game, and the early game goes their way, and it's not something that we're surprised by. We've seen this a couple of times, but more specifically, Hans Sama, someone we called out to step up together with Ignar in that lane. They go all in and they build the lead for themselves. Beautiful stop on Yuki's jump, and this is what we were talking about, is we wanted Hans Sama to not only get that first kill, but then have the team utilize this lead, and then they end up playing around him. He's able to group from the top side down to cover for Power of Evil, pick up another two kills in this fight, and this is enough out of Hans Hammer for me. I, I liked watching this game for him. They drafted the Callista very early. Ignar on the desk yesterday was talking about how good Callista, uh, sorry, Wadid on the desk yesterday was talking about how good Callista is in that laning phase and then in the early fights, Ooh. and they used that perfectly. Big debate there. If it's healthy to crack your fingers or not, I don't know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Hansama definitely won the game. And also, Henning, just as a footnote, we didn't really mention Mysterious Monkeys. In the neg regular order of things, you'd expect Misfits to be stronger than Mysterious Monkeys. But why do you think their strat of banking on Kikis, even though he had a lot of kills, didn't pan out in this scenario? I think when you pick, when you draft for Kikis, you usually just want a safe mid laner, safe AD carry. Can you stay under tower, wave clear, you know, pick something like a virus or an ash or go with a quirk in the mid lane just to stay safe. Here they pick the Vladimir and the Tristana, two great late game team fighting champions, but early on can be hard to pull off and we just saw that getting punished really hard. Tristana with an escape, Vladimir with a pull, not, not that unsafe. Yeah, but... The wave clear and yeah, the, the early laning phase. Not, ah, okay, not it was more them. about the wave yeah. the control over the game. The one thing that, that Kigis had to contend with as well is not only just the way his comp was drafted, but the direction Misfits took on the game. Uh, a lot of the early game emphasis on grouping was against Kigis, and then in the late game. All of these tools we're talking about to get the fight started, a lot of people were drifting towards Kigis' lane. And the other thing that I'm glad to see teams do is exploit the fact that Kigis teleports late a lot of the time. And that is why we saw Misfits go to Baron, start the Baron, and say, okay, you actually need to teach be in here, otherwise we're getting this. And Kikis had no room to play greedily at all. And ultimately, it ends up paying dividends for Misfits. It does. Henning, uh, talk to me about these tools that we see in action here for Misfits. Yeah, just looking at the power spikes here, this is where Misfits are so much stronger, not only because the gold lead, but because how the champions work. Compare the damage coming out of Han Sama here to what Yuki's doing on the Tristana. There's just not even close in that comparison. And so many CC tools to start up the fight. We have the Rakan, the Maxter using the Flash to engage as well, and then Alfari in a losing matchup in the top lane, but contributes so much utility and crowd control to the team fights, he makes it work still. Same goes for Max Lore. We didn't talk too much about the Maokai. It is the first time we see it here in the jungle in the EU LCS. And as you say, it just has so much utility. And I don't think it left as big as an impression on me as, for instance, Yankos' Chogath yesterday. But in this team composition, it fits perfectly. Yeah, and especially when you know you're going up against somebody like Amazing, who's going to draft heavily towards the Gragas when the Rek'Sai is banned away. So you get this basically safe jungle jungle matchup where you're not going to get mm -hmm. pressured, you can pick something like the Maokai that maybe doesn't stand up against early game junglers but can get easily into this game. And Maxwell's even flashing in mid level two, trying to get that W to get a kill and get his mid laner ahead. This is very similar to what G2 did yesterday with Trick out of the jungle. And I'm glad to see Misfits uh, having this active early game that we wanted to see them continue. Strong game overall. We saw Unlimited there with the Mysterious Monkeys, the coach. What do you tell them? Because you kind of got outplayed in the lanes, you kind of got outplayed in the ganks, you kind of got outplayed in the team fights because they were ahead. So where does he start? 
I think it tells his players too that it's okay to give up stuff. You don't have to fight. Just because like Misfits wants to fight it doesn't mean that you have to take the challenge. You can go for the early lane swap as they did, but try to keep doing that, try to get away from the fights when it's not beneficial for you. I think just Mysterious Monk has took too many fights in this game. I want to see them put a little bit more priority on earlier drafting mid or bottom lane with safer laning phase picks. When you pick Tristan and Vlad and you don't put a lot of effort into them early, it's difficult to keep them in the game. And that's where it was really all down to Kikis and he can't do anything on Jace when everybody else is running at him in the lane trying to kill him. Yeah, let's see what happens in Game 2. Coming up next, Mysterious Monkeys and Misfits Gaming hit the rift for Game 2 in the series. Stick around.